you are you are absolutely living the dream. Uh, just wrote a new book called Dream On Now uh, Deliver. All right, Dream On Now Deliver. Uh, the No Nonsense Guide to Achieving Success in the Entertainment Industry. Okay, so let's talk about the book. Why did you write the book? What, what makes you the authority to write a book? This is what I want to know. This is something I've been wanting to write for probably the last 25 years. Um, it's my experience. I've been in the business for 35 years. And over time, I would see people struggling or people would reach out to me and ask me, well, how did you get started? How do I go about being in the entertainment business? And I know how tough it was for me when I started. I was 15. I didn't know where to go. I had the yellow pages um, and I would cold call agencies. I would ask anybody that may know any information about the entertainment business. So I would ask the question. So I know what that felt like and what a struggle it was for me that I decided I'm going to pass that information on. I've always helped others along the way. And then when I was on Deal or No Deal, I had even more people approach me um, asking where to go, what to do, whether it was, you know, a teenager or whether it was a parent um, asking me. I always got those questions. So I figured I need to get this in a book. This is really important. And there's uh, the right way of doing things. And I know a lot of people think it's glitz, glamour, but it's a business and people need to think about it as a business and achieve success. And I, I love how you talk about that because, you know, this, the inner, whether it be the entertainment business, whether it be an entrepreneur, whether it be sales, a person or whatever, it's all the same thing. And, and I think it, it, it should resonate with everybody. I mean, if you're a salesperson out there, you should buy this book because this is going to speak to you as well. I mean, just, just hearing you for that first 30 seconds right now, the things that you talk about, this is a business. You got to treat it like a business. So whatever it is that you're doing, treat it like a business. Stop treating things like spare time, little hobbies. I mean, it, it's, it gave me the chills when you said I went through the yellow pages because I remember <laughs> going through the yellow I'm pages. Glad to hear you remember. <laughs> and, and I was and I was calling and I was ca cold calling businesses. I would because I was trying to recruit people into my company and I would cold call managers and I would say, "Hey, have you ever considered a career change if the money was right?" And I would I would literally I recruited like shoe sales guys, you know, yeah. managers working at their business. And just because I wanted to expand and grow and I was trying to find great people. And so you talk about small jobs. And so <laughs> tell me about maybe a small job that you got early on that impacted your life. Oh my gosh. Uh, some of the small jobs, I, I started out doing some background work and stand in um, jobs on set. Uh, home alone. I was like a person way, way in the background, but it was work. You learn to be there on time, even a little earlier than your time scheduled. Um, you learn certain things along. I, I started learning terminology that I did not know. You start learning terms like on your mark, get on your mark, you know, the lights, the, the camera, you start learning all those things. So I took a lot of those jobs when I first started, even being a perfume girl. I mean, to me, that was, it was modeling. It was a way of interacting with people and it was just the start. So it just took off from there. One thing led to the next. And I always tell people you need to start small, but eventually you'll find your way and you'll find what's, what works for you and what doesn't. You'll find those moments. You'll meet people along the way that may surprise you and lead to another big job. Um, there's just so many things out there, so many aspects and so many opportunities, but you've got to be in those situations. I'm people say, oh, you're so lucky. No, I'm not lucky. I put myself in those situations to have those opportunities. That's what that was. If I would have stayed at home or didn't make those calls or didn't go to those sets, the next thing would have never happened. I wouldn't have been able to climb that ladder to do what I do. I've interviewed over 250 business leaders and celebrities, and there are no secrets anymore. That What you just <laughs> explained right now is the reason why people get wealthy, people have success in, in their careers, and, uh, and people go on to do big things is because they yeah. were just willing 
to put themselves out there. They were willing to take a risk and they were willing to do what most people weren't willing to do. And if you look back on your career, I mean, one of the things that I see every time I research you and and, and look you up, uh, I, I see it was just a consistent effort. It was just like a day in and day out consistent. Let's get another job. Let's find another, uh, you know, role. Let's, let's, you know, contact another person. How important though, would you say it is to to have a good agent? And when did you get an agent in the beginning? Um, early on, and there are different agents for different parts of the entertainment business. So even when I did the perfume work or background work, I went through an agent um, and then realized, okay, if I want something more, if I want to be doing commercials, well, I need to get myself a commercial agent. When it came to hosting, well, I need to get myself a hosting agent. So you start seeking these things out. You start seeing, being on the set, you start seeing and realizing, okay, this works for me. This doesn't. I like this. I don't like that. And you start talking to people and asking people, well, who's your agent? Um, do you mind if, you know, you turn me on to, you know, a referral? Um, ask you know, and if somebody says no, well, and that's happened to me. Um, if somebody says no, you know, do it on your own, basically. Well, then do it on your own. Seek it out. Uh, there's so many ways of going about it, really. Was there was there times where you felt, I mean, were, were you ever scared? I mean, did you ever have anxiety oh about <laughs> situations or t- tell me it's, about that? It's funny you ask that because I haven't thought about that until I started writing the book. I remember I was a teenager. I mean, I started at 15. So it took me forever to pick up that phone and dial. Even though I found, you know, the list in yellow pages, I was scared. Like, what do I say? You know, who am I to make this call? Who am I to ask these questions? Oh my God, they're going to say no. They're going to reject me. Those things kept playing in my head and it would take a long time to muster up the, the energy, the, the, the kahunas to, to, to dial that number and talk to somebody on the other end and take that yes or no, you know, asking those questions of, you know, can I come in and meet with you? Can I, you know, how does it work? Just to ask the questions. And some people were not so nice. And then there were others that were incredible and really open to giving me information. So you just have to weed it out. And, but again, it took a lot for me to make those calls until I started getting more comfortable. The more you do things, obviously, it's like going to the gym. The more you do it, you see results. The more you start making those phone calls and talking to people, the more you're going to see those results. But you have to be um, consistent. As you said, you have to be determined and have that drive. If you want it to be your business and not just a hobby, well, you got to do the work. If you like this video and you want to watch another one, click right here.